There are two to three pieces of paper that are the most important, two to three pieces of paper of your professional life. They can make the difference between making no money and making over $200,000 a year. They can make the difference between being on social assistance and doing meaningful work. And you don't even need to print them. So it's surprising to me that there are people who don't have these two pieces of paper, who don't update these two pieces of paper, who are embarrassed of the two to three pieces of paper that they have, or have pieces of paper that don't even sound like them. Now, these two to three pieces of paper are your resume. When I first heard the word resume, I fell for it hard. I was like, it sounds French, it sounds fancy, and it just rolled off my tongue. Resume. It actually is French, and it means to sum up. And because it often, we forget to put that little mark over the E, it gets confused with the word resume, which means to start again. So the resume is ultimately a fantastic document where you get to put your most incredible stories in one place in order to open up opportunities. So it was really disappointing to me when I learned how to write resumes by copying phrases from some old resume book and putting that into a Word document. I want to say things like, watch three children under the age of eight all summer, ensure they got enough sunlight. And I was told I needed to say, supervised and planned, age-appropriate activities for children. <laughs> really, I was being told that my words weren't enough, that what I wanted to say wasn't enough. Now, you probably can't tell to see me here today, but I'm shy. And I'm somebody who was raised in a house where it was really important not to be seen and definitely never heard. And I was so scared of raising my hand in class in case I got something wrong. And when they picked me anyhow and I got it wrong, I would cry. So when my resume teacher taught me to write it that way, I wasn't really the person who was going to stand up and say, you've got this all wrong. And I lucked out because I got a job in a theater. And at the theater, I got to sign people up for acting classes. I remember a guy called. So he called and he said, I want to take a beginner acting class. And I was like, cool. And he said, yeah, just turned 40. And I have um, been really unhappy for a long time. And the last time I remember feeling happy was when I was in a high school drama class. I was like, oh boy. So signed him up for that class. And then he took a second year class. And now he does fringe shows, right? So awesome for him. But I remember getting off that call and hanging up the phone and going, I never, I never want to be the kind of person who waits 22 years in order to do work that I love. I never want to be that kind of person. I'm always going to choose work that makes my heart sing. And I was really lucky that I got to do that. I think what happens is that people, young and old, experienced and inexperienced, are being told that they can't be themselves in their resumes and they can't be themselves in their careers or their job search. And there's two really big issues with that. First issue, the future of work is here. There are new jobs being posted every day, and those jobs are jobs that never existed before. So you can't use some boring words from a resume to get an innovative, awesome job. There's, you can't do it. The biggest skill that you need in the future of work is being able to know what you're really awesome at and the difference that you make. Second thing, whoever you are in your resume is who you have to be in your interview. And whoever you are in your interview is who you need to be in your job. So if you spend your entire career in a place that doesn't allow you to be yourself and you never find it, then why are we surprised that we have people who are scared, who are sad, who are stressed, who are depressed, who are hurting themselves and hurting other people, where there's a giant hole where they spend the most amount of time. And the only thing that I can think of that can rectify and change all of this, got to burn that resume. <laughs> Big fire! <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> so, uh, I would 
would love if you burned it. It's probably more realistic that your resume is on your computer, uh, maybe all 20 drafts of it, so I actually want you to do the braver thing, braver than burning, and take those resumes, those documents, put them in a recycle bin, and then empty it. Now, before you do, you can absolutely write down all the job titles you've had, your university degrees, the dates, all that important stuff, because you might need it, you know, for LinkedIn. <laughs> but then, you can just absolutely just burn it. And you can even say a prayer, right? Just go like, oh, resume, thank you so much for everything that you've ever given me, for the opportunities you have created, but your services are no longer required, and then empty that bin or start your fire. So then you take yourself for a walk, right? No resume, no problems. Take yourself for a walk. You're gonna go to a forest. You're gonna go to a cafe. Do people say cafe anymore? Coffee shop, right? So take yourself to a coffee shop, and you're going to ask yourself this question. What am I the most proud of doing in my current job? And if you hate your current job, or you're unemployed, that's OK. And if you've never had a job, that's OK. Ask yourself, what am I the most proud of doing in my previous job? Or what am I the most proud of doing like in any school project that I ever did? And sit with that. And even do it for a couple of days. Because those stories, those are the stories that you want to tell. Right? When you're writing your new resume, when you're thinking about your next opportunity, you want to talk about the work that makes your heart sing. There are four skills that are really needed in the future of work. There's lots of lists, like the top 20 lists, but the four that always come up are collaboration, creativity, communication, and problem solving. And the best example I can give you of this in action, the future work in action, is the grocery store. So I don't know about you, but when I go to the grocery store, I always look for the shortest line. And the shortest line is always the self-checkout counter. So I always go there. And I don't know about you, but when I go to the self-checkout counter, I always mess it up. And then, like an angel, the store employee comes, right? And he uses these skills. He creatively collaborates with me to communicate a solution to the issue that I'm having, and then I can take my groceries home. Now, I was pretty good and decent to myself in that I always chose work that made my heart sing. I worked in the arts. But I didn't always choose work that made me money. And I wanted some. So I found myself. <laughs> I found myself crying about money all of the time. And I thought, okay, who is, who is out there making all the money? And I thought, ah, it's people in suits. Well, I can wear a pencil skirt. I'm going to get a job, a corporate job. But how the heck was this drama person, this drama teacher, going to be able to land a job in a corporation? And the only thing I could think of to do was this method that I used to use when I wrote plays. So when you write plays or screenplays, you can take, and you're kind of lost about where it should go, you write each scene on an index card, and then you lay them out. That's, this is a bed. You lay them out on a bed. And then you play around with the order of them until the story has flow. And then you know it's good. And I decided to do this with my career stories. And I call it the career stories method. <laughs> and you can do it too. So what I did is that I wrote out a story of work that I was really proud of for seven days, all on a little index card. And after seven days, I took those cards and I flipped them over, well, I read them, and on the back of them, I identified the strength that I used in each of those stories. So it might be collaboration, organization, like was, a, like was good to other people, helped, those kinds of things. So I wrote those stories out. And then I looked and went, what, what skills keep pumping up, like keep kind of popping up for me? And then I was like, oh, there's about three different categories of skills. And that's the story that I started to share. So I really encourage you to do this method. Do not worry if this story happened like 20 years ago. And don't worry if it happened in school or volunteer. It still works. One of my very favorite um, stories comes from 
or I wouldn't ever really use in a resume, but it lets you know exactly what I'm the best at. So I was working in um, a community art center, and I showed up one day at this community center, and I hadn't bonded with the youth yet, but I showed up, and all the youth were like around this dog. And they were like, Carrie, we can't come to art class today because we have this dog. He was smaller, but he was, well, my dress is short. So he's, the chef. so they're like, we can't, he's going to get hit by a car. And I was like, oh, we'll bring him inside. And they said, no, no dogs are allowed here. And I was like, we'll see about that. So I went inside the community center and I said, where's the ED? And they said, she's in a board meeting. So I went down the stairs and I knocked on the door and the door opened and there's the ED and the whole board of directors. And I'm like, the kids have a dog. The dog is tame. Can I please bring him inside um, for the class? If he messes, I'll clean it up. And they were like, sure. So then I grabbed the kids and they came inside and we, we were going to do art. What I had planned that day was to um, draw self-portraits. We couldn't do that, there was a dog. So I had the kids draw self, like draw portraits of the dog. Beautiful, like super detailed, beautiful drawings they made of this dog. And then I wrote, found dog on it, and we put my cell phone number. And then I found a skipping rope, and I made a leash out of it, and we took those drawings and some tape and the kids, and we went through the neighborhood, and we posted those posters. And eventually, we found a woman who said she would take the dog, and we gave the dog to her. Now, you might go, oh, well, Carrie, that story lets me know you're really great with kids, or you're really great with dogs. It's not true. Well, kind of, but <laughs> that work not only didn't pay a lot, <laughs> but that work didn't... Like, it was, that wasn't my demographic. What that story shows me is that the work that I really love is I love to be in the muck of it. I love to be in the muck of it with somebody else when they have a problem, and I can help them think of a creative solution, and we get through it. It's like the work that makes my heart sing. So that's the story I told. I started to tell that story when I applied for jobs, and I ended up getting a job at an HR firm doing outplacement. Outplacement, if you don't know, is a nice word for like letting people go. Um, I don't know if it's even that nice. So in outplacement, what happens is that someone will call and they'll say, we're going to let Tony go at 2 o'clock today. And um, I'll show up at 1.30. I will coach the manager how to let Tony go. And then he will let Tony go. And then I'm the first person who meets Tony after he's lost his job. And I'll sit there in the muck of it, of that great loss with him, helping him to like compose and feel all the feels. And then I get paid by the company to help him figure out what to do next. And I've been doing this work for seven years. Oh, thanks. Thank you. And when you're meeting somebody who's just experienced a great loss, being, telling them that they have to be something else in order to land is ridiculous. So we'll do this method, and I'll have them sharing wonderful stories. And here's what happens. You do the index card method, right? You do the career stories method. And then what you can figure out from that when you know you're three is you can introduce yourself in a new way. You can say, I am really great at boom, 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 super strength, super strength, super strength. And if you take a little bit of extra time, to think about where you do your ideal work and who you do your ideal work with, then you can say, yeah, and I do my best work with, and say that. And then you have a career brand, right? I'm great at boom, 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 and I like working with these people. Sounds way better than anything you're going to get from a resume template book. So it pains me. Oh, it pains me, because you guys know how I feel about resumes, right? So it pains me to say this, but if you can do this, if you can share this story, what you're really great at, and share that on social media, share it with your friends, share it in your performance reviews, then you may never actually need a resume again. <laughs> One last request. If you have the distinct honor and privilege, and for me, it is the greatest honor and privilege in the entire world of helping people to sell themselves, to land employment, and figure out what they're awesome at, start from this place. 
Start from the place of helping them to know that their voice matters and that their work is important because the templates and the applicant tracking systems and all of the formats can come later. What people need to know is that they can be themselves and the future of work actually needs you to be yourself because their words and their stories matter. And all of you here, your words matter too and your stories matter. You actually all are super awesome. <laughs> That's all I have, thank you.